So I chose today to talk about HPV surgery for malignancy in the elderly. Uh, first of all, I will begin with a, a question. What is your definition of elderly people? I propose five answers, uh, 65, 70, 75, 80, and a special answer for our master. I don't understand the question. Uh, well, it is difficult to, do, to be interactive uh, virtually, so I'll give you the medical answer, which is, excuse me, which is uh, variable uh, over 65, 70. Anyway, over 80, it is very elderly people. So you agree that it is an evolving definition since we have the president of the United States of 79 year old and I saw Cameron performing pancreatic surgery at 81. So um, is it uh, the highly variable age of retirement or the beginning of physical and mental physiological degradation? And you all know those are super mammy and super daddy, and you agree that age is not all. So uh, I will deal with, uh, first of all, the frequency of uh, HPV malignancy, then I, I will uh, deal with the physiopathology, a little bit of evidence-based medicine, and I will finish with our experience leading to recommendation on indication, realization, and post-op management for those population. So uh, HPV malignancy is a frequent issue because median age of diagnosis of malignancy is over 65. It's true for colorectal metastasis, and we heard of uh, all that uh, before. HCC, biliary cancer, it has been told by uh, uh, Timothy Pollack. And uh, it is also uh, uh, obvious that overall HPV malignancy incidence is rising, and of course, the elderly population is growing. You know that life expectancy is increasing all over the world, and particularly in Western country, uh, reaching, uh, well, uh, uh, 85 years for uh, the women and 79 for uh, the men. So the, the, the part of uh, the, the population over 65 years in Europe is between 13 and 22, as you see in France is the middle 18 and the pollen is uh, 16. And the explanation is of course the progress of medicine, but uh, also the, the, the decrease of fertility rate, which is uh, quite low in France, but uh, very low in Poland, uh, you have to do something guys. And uh, this is the plot uh, now in 2020, and you see that uh, in 50 years, the part, the, the proportion of patient of people uh, over 70 will be multiplied by five or six. And uh, the number of apostectomy in France here is represented, and you see that uh, uh, the uh, proportion of uh, apostectomy over 70 years uh, is rising, uh, and now 35% uh, of this apostectomy and less 10% uh, over 80. So uh, to discuss HPP surgery is in the elderly is unavoidable today. Now, uh, let's move on physiopathology. Of course, the liver is getting older. Uh, we know that the volume decreases from 20 to 38% over time, depending on the age range studied. And uh, we know that the liver has a lower ability to regenerate. A decreased liver blood flow is uh, seen and probably uh, a loss of 30% between 30 and 100 years. And uh, the slight impairment of liver function, particularly the albumin, biliary salts, and cholesterol secretion. This is more true for the pancreas, which uh, has not the possibility of regeneration. And we observe a decrease in volume with atrophy, which means a slight impairment of its function. So, of course, it is aging, but it still works very well. Uh, the, uh, the loss of regeneration is very slight. It has been uh, shown in that paper uh, on hepatocellular carcinoma surgery. 
And uh, we know as transplanters that uh, uh, very old grafts are doing very well. This is our uh, last uh, uh, transplantation with a 19-year-old uh, graft of a diabetic patient, and it worked very well with, with a, a perfect function. The patient, well, the consequences of aging are more problematic with a higher risk of presenting cardiovascular and pulmonary comorbidities, a cognitive and psychological fragility and more deleterious consequences to confinement to bed. And we add the changes in the metabolism and the pharmacocinetic with an increase of mass, fat mass and decrease of albumin, which means higher blood concentration of some drugs. And of course, even if it's not obvious, an impaired renal metabolism, which means that we had to adapt our prescription. Concerning liver resection on AHEC, we have here a meta-analysis and you see uh, a lot of uh, 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 Eastern uh, uh, studies, uh, the cutoff of age is quite uh, different. And we see in this plot that the overall survival rates are quite the same. Concerning uh, liver resection for metastasis, uh, thanks to René Adzan, we have this beautiful uh, uh, series of liver med sur survey with a large amount of, of patient. And uh, we, you see that uh, a little less major hepatectomy in uh, uh, elderly patient, a little less preoperative chemotherapy. But uh, even if uh, the mortality and the morbidity is slightly higher, it's not significant. And uh, concerning the overall survival, uh, you see that it's a little less, but it is expected. Uh, another paper here on uh, 149 epitectomy, and they compared the three population. And you see that the mortality rate is not significant, but we have, of course, more uh, complication, uh, cardiac and renal complication. Uh, Another point which is quite important is uh, the uh, well tolerance of uh, chemotherapy in those patients uh, with uh, uh, a morbidity and mortality which is equivalent uh, uh, to a, a younger patient. So in our uh, center, we conducted a retrospective study from uh, in to 10 years uh, and we collected 133 patients older than 80 years, and only for oncologic indications. So we had uh, 70 major hepatectomy and 63 pancreatectomy, even with associated procedure. Uh, we uh, studied the predictive factors of mortality, length of stay in the hospital, and the loss of autonomy. And uh, well, we expected to have a, a worse result in pancreatectomy because we know that uh, it has a, a a higher mortality, morbidity, and functional consequences. But it was the result was surprising. Here are the result. Uh, we uh, used uh, the SEER score, which is a cumulative illness rating score, uh, ranging from zero to fifty-four points, and uh, we have all the system, and we assign. Uh, a number of points from zero to four, depending on the impairment of the system. And we have here uh, a cutoff of CR7 uh, on the rock uh, table. And uh, this is our result in this graph. You have in orange the number of patients over the time. In gray, it is the score of comorbidities. And in blue, the mortality. As you see, we have quite a high rate of mortality, 7.5%, and surprisingly, it was a major liver uh, resection. On multivariate analysis, we found that neurologic history, the comorbidities, the transfusion rate, the associated procedure, and the necessity of reoperation were statistically associated with bad uh, outcome. And uh, if we um, uh, study the loss of independence as discharge at the hospital, uh, the, uh, the, the significant uh, point was the preoperative malnutrition, the SEER score, and the geri geriatric complication. 
this led to our golden rules for uh, the management of this patient. And first of all, the operative decision. For us, the benefit of surgery should be certain. And we have to take into account the life expectancy, because you know, look at the table uh, uh, on the left, on the right. Uh, uh, if you have a patient with 85 years, he had six or seven, depending on the sex, year uh, of uh, life expectancy. So it has to be a curative surgery. On, and of course, we have to discuss alternative treatment to surgery if there is the same results, as, as you know, except perhaps for HCC, the curative treatment is uh, uh, usually surgery. Second, the patient should have no uh, cognitive alteration. We have to deal with active patient who understands the principle, the aim of surgery, which is willing to have surgery and good family support is very important. The third point is that uh, we have uh, to uh, be very aware of uh, the comorbidity and no major com comorbidity is reported. That means a CS uh, less than eight and uh, particularly the heart failure, the renal dysfunction and the neurologic uh, uh, history. And finally, good nutritional status is mandatory. So we have to have uh, for this patient an optimal anesthesiological evaluation and also what we have more and more an oncogeriatric evaluation, which is very helpful. The second, the operative management. We have to uh, be uh, very, um, uh, very aware of the importance of the personalized, planned, safe surgical treatment. That means a non, no long-lasting procedure, no bleeding, and uh, a restricted use of vena cava clamping, and uh, probably a correction of malnutrition. That means we have to... Uh, uh, do a digenostomy for uh, uh, the, the feeding after uh, uh, quite easily. The second point is an optimal anesthesiological management because it has been proved that the operative hypertension is one of the major factors of fa delirium postoperative and complications. And at last, the benefit of minimal surgery, minimal invasive surgery, is obvious in this patient. It has been shown, uh, of course, uh, in that multicentric uh, uh, study uh, of patients uh, more than 70 years. And uh, exactly like for uh, all the patients, we have less blood loss, less morbidity, less pulmonary infection, and a decreased length of hospitalization. Uh, the final and the least, not the least point is the past operative management of these patients because we have to, 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 to give them a nice environment with family support, home staff. Think of additive prosthesis, glasses, danger. It is very crucial and other measures to avoid delirium post operatively. This is a, a management of pain uh, relief drugs. Uh, you have to prefer morphine and uh, very careful with anti-inflammatory drugs, long life, long half-life neuroleptics. At least enhanced recovery measures are very important in those patients. And in fact, in that, uh, the, the, those, uh, those methods, you have all the methods to avoid the consequences of the confinement in the bed for those patients. So... Uh, in conclusion, HBB surgery in elderly and very elderly patients is possible if indication is justified, reasonable, taking into account the life expectancy and the benefits of surgery. Second, if HBB surgery is safe, rapid, and we have to avoid, if possible, associated procedure. The post-operative management is also crucial it has to be appropriate, adapted to this population. So HPB surgery in the elderly will have excellent result, particularly for the, if the patient itself is requesting the intervention and is willing to cross the limit. And you will agree with me, age is not all, but brain is nearly all. Thank you for listening.
Thank you very much, uh, Laurence. Uh, you've, you've shown us, in fact, that uh, uh, edge simply is not a factor, but we have to be aware of many factors. We have a question from uh, Christian. Please. Yeah, uh, hello, Laurence. Uh, so you, you demonstrate that even major uh, HPB surgery can be performed in uh, older patients. Uh, do you think it's uh, still acceptable to have an age limit for liver transplant? Yeah. This is a very, very, very good question because uh, uh, it has been discussed here in France. And, uh, you know, uh, the, 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 the limit of age of transplantation is proportional to the age of, uh, uh, of the, 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 the leader in transplantation. So uh, in France, it's uh, increasing. And now we have a patient transplanted over 70 years. We have no real, real limit in France. It's not, uh, uh, there is no rules. But uh, as a matter of fact, I think that for liver transplantation also, we have to, uh, uh, to take into account the life expectancy and uh, all those factors, the comorbidity and uh, the motivation of the patient. So uh, uh, we have to, to, to deal with that in, the, in further years. <clears throat> Laurence, uh, if, if you put your 90-year uh, donor liver to a young patient, do you think it improves? And it may go to 150 years, 170 years? This is a very, very important point. We, we don't, in fact, we don't know, but I, I guess uh, it, it, will, it will be okay over the year. Maybe uh, we will have to, to do that study in patients we transplanted with very old graft, because uh, when we uh, perform a biopsy of those, uh, of those livers, the biopsy is really, really good. So, uh, Maybe it will last, uh, well, 120 years. Why not? Okay, one more yeah, this is Jean. Uh, yeah, um, wonderful talk. Uh, there, there is a little animal data that when you take old hepatocytes and treat them with young serum, they, um, they perform better. But I think Experiment, right? We do the, the opposite experiment, young livers into older people. I'm sorry, it's it, the, the I, I didn't hear all the question. Yeah, no, the question is simply that we are not, uh, would you agree we are not so willing to put very old livers into younger recipients? Do you agree with that? Um, it is questionable. I agree with you, but maybe we are wrong. I don't know, but it, it's a problem. I agree. Okay, time for one last question. Yes, uh, I would like to mention about the uh, factors which you have enumerated that uh, biological behavior of the malignant disease in elderly is not the same as in the younger population. So. Uh, it should be also considered as a one of the factors in qualifying pa patients for the liver surgery. But uh, my question is uh, concerning the life expectancy. Uh, how long, according to you, should be this life expectancy uh, be considered to qualify the patient for surgery? Well, you have to, to think uh, that those patients uh, has, we know that, uh, life expectancy, for example, for 80 years of 10 years. And if your uh, the disease uh, they have uh, shorten their life expectancy to one or two years, it is worthy. Uh, by the way, uh, you said that uh, the, 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 the evolution of malignancy in older patients is probably slower. Uh, it is uh, what every, everybody thinks. But uh, I, I, I discussed with an uh, oncogeriatric and an uh, uh, oncologist. It's not, it's not always the case. It's not always the case. Maybe we think that very young patient has a very terrible evolution because it's, tri it's striking. But uh, 
I, I don't think that the tumor biology is so different. So we have to, to, to take it in, in, into account this point also, the, the, bio, the, the tumor. And that's why I think that uh, uh, we have to, to decide surgery only if we can cure the patient, if the, the, the benefit is obvious. Laurence, thank you very much for this wonderful talk. Thank you. Thank you, Hugo. Thank you all.